What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I legit think I'm allergic to insects, like I'm not even kidding. Every time I go out and there are a lot of flies around me, like my nose literally just starts getting really itchy and like cringy and like my neck starts itching and like I just, I just feel like they're inside me. I just hate, hate, hate insects. So really for me, they're all for my nightmares, so that's just, that's great. So hopefully I can get through this video without cringing the hell out and getting a runny nose at the end of it. So anyway, let's just do this. These are the top 10 scary insects that live in your nightmares. But they don't, because they're all real. <laughs> Starting off with number 10 is the screw fly, or its scientific name, Hominivorax, which happily translates to man-eater. And they are. <laughs> Found mostly in the Western Hemisphere, there are actually two types of this bug, the Old World version and the New World version, and clearly this is the new one for anyone that was confused. Now an adult screw fly will literally lay a hundred eggs on some warm blooded animal with a wound. And unlike the Old World version, the New World ones lay six to eight batches of eggs into one wound. Usually the adult screw fly enter baby animals through their belly buttons, but only if they're newborn, they're just savage, no one, no one is safe. The eggs hatch and then go for the wound and use their fangs to cut through the skin and they'll keep going until they hit bone. They'll bite through your nerves, they'll enter the bloodstream, they don't give a flying <laughs> The more you try to get rid of it, the deeper it'll burrow into you, which is just Magnificent. I just love it. It gets just get better and better. Unless you get it treated, they will literally keep feeding on you until you die. Thankfully, we aren't their first choice of meal, but an open wound is an open wound. Their jaws can easily cut through our skin and tissue as well, and there's no medication available for it other than maybe surgically removing the infestation or just dying, really. Coming in at number nine is the tarantula hawk wasp. Can you just can you just take in the name for a second? This bug is out here taking out tarantulas as its day job. Measuring at a whopping five centimeters, it's one of the biggest wasps on the planet and is usually blue, black in color, with wings and obviously hooked claws because screw us, right? Its stinger is nearly a full centimeter long and it's basically just a flying injection, you guys. Even a baby tarantula hawk wasp has a super demanding diet. They need spider meat. And so their mums try and go for the thickest spiders out there, and I'm talking thick with two C's you guys, it's serious. They stroke their webs making them think they've caught something, then they'll come out, get stung, get dragged back to the wasp's nest, and then the wasp will then inject her baby into its body and the baby will eat it from the inside out. Thankfully the adults only feed on nectar and berry juice and fruit and only the females can sting. Apparently as long as you don't provoke them and leave them alone, they won't sting you. You. Someone actually volunteered to be stung by one just to see how bad it was, and he scored it a 4 out of 4, saying it was traumatically painful, like a running hairdryer was dropped into his bubble bath. Honestly, say no more, say no more. I'm not trying to interact with any flying injection bug that uses tarantulas as baby nurseries. That's a hard, hard no from me. No. No, 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 no. That was me karate chopping all the tarantula hawk wasps away, just in case you didn't know what that was. At number eight, we have the assassin bug or the kissing bug, and kiss, it definitely does not, unless you're talking about the kiss of death. Now, oh my god, just looks wise, this insect is ugly. I'm sorry, but it is. It has six legs, it's got a round backside and two antennas, and is covered in just hairy fuzz. Not as much as a tarantula, but kind of the same vibe, and it also has this like snout sort of thing on its face, like a mosquito. Mosquito, you know, like a sucker of some kind. The assassin bug uses its straw like mouth to inject its prey with a toxin that literally liquefies their insides. And then it sucks up all those liquefied organs and just enjoys it shamelessly. They're mostly found in the south of the US and they definitely bite. They linger near their prey, mostly mammals, and yes, that unfortunately includes us as well. They like to bite us near our mouth and eyes and that can cause us to have a lot of redness and swelling. And its feces can also spread a parasite that causes Chagas disease which damages your major organs and could kill you. <laughs> no. They hide between mattresses, so just stay away from there, and they're attracted to bright lights. So I've, I've warned you guys, I've given you the info you need, be smart, stay away from them. 
How many times will I cry in this video? Let me know. <laughs> Filling our number seven slot is the Puss Caterpillar, also known as a southern flannel moth. And if you just saw this out, you just think someone left their blonde toupee on the ground. It's just a hairy little thing which may look harmless, but it's actually one of the most venomous caterpillars out there. They're about an inch long and are covered in this fur fuzz that according to Wikipedia, makes them look like a Persian cat. They do not look like Persian cats from any angle. They come in multiple colors and are mostly found in the east in states of the US and when they're young their fur is a bit more curly so I guess they're cuter and when they get older their black furry feet come out and they kind of look like bumblebee knockoffs. Now their class is so dangerous because this fur is actually made up of venomous spines that if touched leads to immediate skin irritation, bumps, swelling. People that have touched them have described the pain as similar to blunt force trauma or a broken bone. Now if the reaction is severe it could lead to nausea, chest pain, difficulty breathing, like it gets it's bad. Oh my god, there's a bug. But the treatment is actually pretty funny. Within an hour of touching a puss caterpillar, if you have any of its spines on you, you can remove them by using scotch tape and putting on your arm and just ripping it off. DIY remedies. Now at number six is the tetsu fly, also known as tick tick flies. These flies bite like a mofo and are mostly found in Africa. Looks wise, they're usually brown or yellow, they have fat bellies, and they sort of look like shorter, stubbier mosquitoes. And like mosquitoes, they suck out your blood, but in a much more brutal way than a mosquito. Their mouths have tiny serrations all over it that they use to saw into your skin. But it's not just the sucking blood part that sucks about them, pun intended, didn't even realize. They're pesky creatures because they transmit diseases really easily, and the most common one being the sleeping sickness. It starts off with a bit of a headache, then a fever, your muscles start to ache, but as it gets worse, you'll start getting more tired. You'll experience a sudden personality change, your coordination will become poor and you'll just be severely confused. And if you leave it untreated, it's fatal. In terms of prey, they usually target mammals found in the woodlands. The females stick to animals, but it's actually the males that usually attack humans. And sadly, despite being flies, they're not as easy to kill as house flies are. Like why? Why is it so hard? They're physically tough and it takes more than a fly swatter to end those hoes. We're gonna need an army, guys. We're gonna need an army. Coming in at number five is the Amazonian giant centipede. Commonly considered the world's largest species of centipede, they can grow up to 35 centimeters long. And if I saw this crawling on the ground, I wouldn't even try to kill it. I would just vomit or cry or both. It's mostly found in South America and the Caribbean, and generally in most tropical rainforest kind of areas or dry forest areas. As carnivores, they feed on any animal they can kill, so it usually eats other smaller insects, you know, spiders, small reptiles like frogs or lizards, and at best, snakes and bats. Now these centipedes sort of have conflicting personality traits. On the one hand, they're aggressive, and on the other hand, they're nervous. So what that translates to is the centipede latching onto its predator's legs and biting it and hoping its venom will subdue or kill it. Now it's fatal to most small animals and thankfully non-lethal to humans. A win for us, you guys. Only one person has ever died from an Amazonian giant centipede bite, and they were four years old, so I feel like the fact they were small had a part to play in it. And although it may not kill you, it still causes severe pain and swelling, fever, and just all around weakness. And of course, if you're allergic to its toxins, then yeah, you're a goner for sure. Sorry about that. Allergies are a bummer. At number four is the bullet ant. Now if you were to guess which insect has the most painful sting in the world and you guessed the bullet ant, well you'd be right. These ants are mostly found in rainforests in Nicaragua, the east of Honduras, and the south of Paraguay. They honestly look like regular ants, I couldn't really tell the difference at all except they're hairier. Now they're not aggressive ants per se, but they get super vicious when they're defending their nest, like they actually make a sound and then start stinging you. Now people have compared the pain of a sting to being shot. They said it feels like waves of burning, throbbing pain that doesn't let up for 24 hours. If you get stung, it's likely you'll start finding blood in your poop, and the sting has a paralyzing toxin in it as well, so really there's just nothing good going on here. There's apparently even a tribe in Brazil that uses them in their initiation rites to become warriors. They sedate 80 of them, then weave them into gloves made from leaves with the stingers facing inwards, obviously, and then the person has to wear them for five full minutes. To fully complete the initiation, they have to do this 20 times over the course of months or years. Can you imagine? I would actually die. 
I would die. I would straight up die. Filling a number three slot is the giant silkworm caterpillar, also known as the killer caterpillar. And I'm really worried that there are so many caterpillar centipede like insects on this list because I thought most of them were harmless. Turns out they're most definitely not. Now, this insect looks messed up and creepy, I'm not gonna lie. It's just ugly, I'm sorry. Looks wise, they're around four to five centimeters long, and the actual bodies are green or brown, but what makes them creepy are all these tubercles they have coming out of them. They look like little leaves coming out of them and they are detachable. In essence, the caterpillar is really just the larva of a giant silkworm moth and it's their detachable hairs that make them super venomous. If you touch one or pick one up, the spine punches your skin really easily and releases its toxins into you. From there, it can cause blood leakage into the brain and it won't even clot because the toxins have strong anti-clotting agents in them, which is just great because great. It also causes gangrene, hematoma, and before long the internal bleeding spreads throughout your whole body, which leads to brain death and compression. A total of 500 people have died from touching them and honestly, you need about 20 to 100 of these spines injecting venom into you for you to actually die, so I guess the numbers are a bit on our side. And if you don't live in the area they're found in, then you're good. Like if you're all the way in like Australia, you're all good. They have spiders. Now at number 2 is the Asian Giant Hornet. And if you've watched my wasp nests that need to be destroyed series, then you've heard about these a million times, but oh my god, these little monsters are just lethal. Now they're the largest species of hornet in the world, and although they're found throughout Asia, they're mostly located in Japan. And you know how with most animals and bugs, they won't really say anything to you unless you provoke them? Well, that's not the case here. They will literally come for you. They're very aggressive, they're scared of literally nothing, they feed honeybees to their young, which means destroying whole hives in the process which they're just fine with. If we do the numbers, one Asian giant hornet can tear 40 honeybees in half in less than a minute. Less than a minute you guys! That is… I'm getting anxiety. There was a case where a swarm of the hornets attacked this 87 year old Japanese grandma in a wheelchair, stung her more than 150 times in an hour and then she died. Like the Japanese death toll from these hornets are 40 people a year and back in 2013 they injured 1,600 people in China. The stings usually result in cardiac arrest but if they sting you enough times your organs just start failing and it's, it's, it's not a good time I'd imagine. And finally, at number one is the Maricopa Harvester Ant. I know you're probably like, why the hell is an ant at number one? Well, I mean, fair, but also it's the most venomous insect in the world. It's mostly found in Arizona, so sucks to suck Arizona residents. I'm glad I'm not one of them. <laughs> its venom and sting is more than 20 times stronger than a honeybee's, and the intense pain after can last longer than four to eight hours. The one interesting thing about their venom is that it contains this alkaloid poison that chemically alarms just all the other ants around in the vicinity to come attack. It takes about 12 stings to kill a rat and it'd take about 350 to kill a human, which sounds like a lot, but if they're all coming at you like an army, they can get to that number pretty damn quickly. And it's not even that 350 ants have to separately sting you, an ant will attach itself to you, then turn around so it can just repeatedly sting the sh** out of you. So really the possibility of like a mere 35 ants stinging you 10 times each looks very viable. They're usually a brownish colour and are covered in tiny little heads hair like follicles and those pincer mouths they have? Run for your life people, run for your lives. And that's it for today's list guys, I don't know why I always end up with the insect related videos, the wasp nest series and now this, but honestly I'm not even mad at it because it makes me learn a bunch and now I just know which insects to stay away from at all costs. Let me know if you've ever encountered any of the ones on the list in real life and what happened as I would love to know. As always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!